Good morning and welcome to CBS News Mornings. It is just about 7 a.m. here in New York City. I am Doug Williams in for Anne Marie Green. We begin in the Middle East where Israel's military continues to battle Hamas in at least seven locations two days after the militant group launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. Israeli officials confirmed at least 700 of its citizens were killed. The White House says several Americans have also been killed. Meanwhile, Palestinian militant groups claim to have captured more than 130 hostages. This is how everything unfolded Saturday. At about 6.30 a.m. local time, Hamas launched a barrage of rockets into Israel, hitting several cities. Hamas claims it fired 5,000 rockets, while Israel's military said 2,500 rockets had been fired. A little more than an hour later, Israel's military said Palestinian gunmen had crossed into Israel. Most of the fighters entered through a security barrier, barrier separating Gaza and Israel. At 9.45 a.m., explosions were heard in Gaza, a strip of land home to some 2.3 million Palestinians. Fifteen minutes later, Israel's military said its air force was carrying out attacks there, and officials say nearly 500 people have been killed. By Saturday afternoon, Israel's military said its troops were working to clear communities that had been overrun by gunmen, our Naomi Ruckham has more on this unfolding conflict. The night sky over Gaza glowed orange as Israel launched more airstrikes overnight. Palestinians ran for cover after an earlier attack. Bulldozers cleared some of the rubble in Gaza. Israeli soldiers converged on the south, where Hamas says it took dozens of hostages. Frustrated family members of the missing are gathering at a center in Tel Aviv. We don't know what's going on. No one's talking to us. Uh, we can't get in talk, contact with anyone. The U.S. is sending a carrier strike group to the region in support of Israel, which includes the Navy aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford. The only things we've said to Israel are that we're here, we've got your back. Uh, we want to make sure that you have the support that you need. The permanent observer of Palestine to the United Nations called for an end to Israeli occupation. It is time for an immediate end to the violence and the bloodshed. Israel is already mourning its victims, including an Israeli policeman. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. And for the latest on the ground in Tel Aviv, let's bring in CBS News reporter Haley Ott. Uh, Haley, what's the latest? Where is the fighting taking place and what are you seeing at this hour? Good morning. This morning, there was still fighting being reported in the south near Gaza. We're hearing reports that maybe that area has been taken back under Israeli army control, though there is some sporadic fighting. We are working to confirm those reports. Around 100,000 army reservists have been called up for service. We went to an army base near Tel Aviv where some of those people are showing up to report for duty. There were hundreds of cars left down the road in front of that center, people who had come to report for duty, to report for their call. We spoke to some of those soldiers. They were shocked and sad by what had happened over on Saturday. They couldn't believe that anything like that could happen, but they said that they were willing to do whatever it took for Israel to defend their country, though they hoped that this would be Israel's last war. Everyone we spoke to said that they did want peace. A ground invasion is expected, though we don't know any details of that, what it might be, when it might come. There are obviously hostages. We've heard reports of those hostages taken into Gaza. So in any calculations for what comes next by the Israeli army, the safety and security of those hostages will be paramount. Haley, in terms of the hostages, the impact on civilians is part of what makes this situation so catastrophic. Are the majority of those hostages indeed civilians? The truth is that we don't know very much about the hostages. They're being identified in large part by the, their families on social media. So people are in WhatsApp groups. There's a WhatsApp group I'm in, sort of a chat group that used to be for people who were protesting against some of those judicial reforms that were being worked out here. Um, that group has changed completely to only being accounts of people who are missing loved ones and asking for any information and offering to speak to whomever they can. 
So information is few and far between. There are centers that be, are being set up for the families of the missing. Dozens of people we saw at one of those centers. We spoke to two sisters. Their father had been taken hostage out of his home. The way that they knew that was because their mother was also in the house and she had been left there. They were very upset. Everyone was very upset. But one notable thing too is both at the army base that we visited this morning and at that center for the families of the missing, there were many volunteers who had showed up with food, with water, to do whatever they could to help their community at this time. Beyond uh, terrified and beyond being fearful for their lives, generally speaking, what has the reaction been that you've gotten from Israelis that you've spoken to? People that I've spoken to never anticipated this happening. They had a lot of confidence in their army and their intelligence service, and they were very surprised that something like this could have occurred in the first place. Young people said they'd never experienced anything like this in their lives. I've spoken to some older people who said they've lived here for a long time. They're used to rockets overhead. They're used to the sound of booms. That's Iron Dome, Israel's, de Israel's defense system, intercepting those rockets. They're used to violence, to conflicts, but they this is something new. This is something worse than they've ever experienced before. Some have compared it to their 9-11. The streets of Tel Aviv were really empty today. People were working from home, were staying from home, or were out volunteering or reporting for duty. So um, that's really being felt here on the streets. And last one for you, Haley. We only have about 30 seconds left. Uh, was there warning for this attack? We keep hearing that nobody saw this coming, especially this level of attack. Was this an intelligence failure? That's the big question. That's the big question that everyone is asking and everyone, all the officials are being asked. And when we've asked, we've been told that that is an important question. There will be a review. But for the moment, the concern is the safety of Israel, the defense of the country, and the military operations that are undergoing. Haley yeah. Ott, live for us in Tel Aviv. Haley, thank you. Please stay safe for us there. In the wake of the continuing violence in Israel, law enforcement officials are stepping up security in Jewish and Muslim communities here in the U.S., Christian Benavides has more on the American reaction to the violence we're seeing. Families lucky enough to escape the escalating conflict unfolding in Israel landed in California after catching a last minute flight out of Tel Aviv. My heart is there. Oh, my family, everybody's there. My, aunt, my uh, cousin's uh, husband just passed away trying to save other people. In New York City, the lights of the Empire State Building were lit up in the colors of the Israeli flag in solidarity. Uh, we have the largest Jewish population outside of Tel Aviv here in this uh, city, mm -hmm. and I'm, it's really horrifying to look at some of the images. Politically, Republicans continue to attack the Biden administration over the August prisoner swap deal that unfroze $6 billion in Iranian funds, an ally of the Hamas terror group. To think that they're not moving money around is irresponsible to say that to the American people. Biden administration officials say those funds have not been used and could only be used for humanitarian purposes. And critics are also questioning how both U.S. and Israeli intelligence could have missed this attack was coming. Christian Benavides, CBS News. Supporters of Israel held demonstrations across the U.S. this weekend. In New York City, they were met yesterday by pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Police quickly separated the two sides. I'm here at this very tragic time in the history of the state of Israel and the Jewish people to show my support and to say that they're not alone. The world is with them, not just Jewish people around the world, but good people around the world. This is a human response to the absolutely horrendous conditions that uh, Israeli has been putting Palestinians through. Barricades had to eventually be put in place to prevent violence. Some major U.S. airlines are suspending flights to Tel Aviv as fighting rages on in Israel. The airlines include United, Delta, and American. They normally run direct services to Tel Aviv from major cities like New York and Miami. United said it was suspending services, quote, until conditions allow them to resume, end quote. Air France and Cathay uh, Pacific have also canceled flights.